What's up, everybody? My name is Jeff Bunke. Uh, I'm here at the 2025 Lehigh First Mid-Atlantic Region Championship. Uh, we're here today to film a behind the bumpers with one of the premier teams at this event, 2539, the Krypton Cougars. I'm here with Jace, Quinn, and Alex. They're going to be going over the robot and all of its awesome features here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, so first, uh, Jace, why don't you start us off? Tell us a little bit about the Peace Path and the mechanical subsystems. All right, so our Peace Path starts up at the chute where we intake from the station. So we decided to go with a passive chute design to make sure that we could minimize our weight. And this is actually our V3 of the chute. We started with a kind of drawbridge, but we changed it to be just a U that was passive. So from there, we'll go to our gripper. Go ahead, Alex. All right, and our gripper, we are also on our second iteration here. We decided to go with a side wheels set up here. We originally started with kind of like a claw that had wheels on each side, but we eventually switched to this design so that we could more effectively handle pieces and get them from the chute quicker. And then finally, that gripper is attached to our elevator, which is just a simple two-stage elevator that uses the motion of the first stage to drive the second stage. Jace, and it's, <clears throat> Jace sorry to cut you off there. What, what's the reason you guys went two-stage versus three-stage? Yeah, so we determined at the beginning of the year that we didn't necessarily need to do algae in the net. So we wanted to focus mainly on coral. So we did some math and some drawing in CAD to determine that we didn't really need three stages to be able to reach L4. And that turned out to be true. So we were able to place all the coral we need with just a two-stage elevator and allowed us to save some weight. Nice, nice. Quinn, uh, what do you have to show us? I have a climber to show you for this year. Okay. So for this year, we went with a passive climber head and that is driven by a winch. Uh, we started off with a few different designs at the very beginning, from Powerhead, um, an external passive climber, and this internal passive climber design. So how it works is we have a winch at the back, and that winch pulls on our head back here. That winch also pulls out this pin here. So when the pin pulls, that allows our finger to drop and the head to pop out of frame. And that finger cantilevers the cage. So as we climb, we cantilever on the cage, Head grabs the cage, pulls back, and we get off the ground. And we found that we can climb in under eight seconds. Let me ask you something, uh, Quinn. Um, did you guys hit that eight second mark from the beginning? Or when you were first starting to use this climber, did you have to kind of dial it in and get it a little bit clo closer to eight seconds? So we didn't have to dial it in because lineup this year is not very easy. The yeah. visibility is kind of difficult on the field. Yeah. So it took just a lot of drive practice to get that dialed in. The actual climb has been that fast though. Yeah, yeah. You guys have one of the cl fastest climbs in, in the district right now, so definitely an impressive mechanism. Awesome. Thanks, Quinn. Uh, Alex, wh why don't you round us out here? Hello. Well, for programming, we use our two limelights on the front of the robot. These are two limelights that see April tags, and we use those for all the vision-based code that we, we do. Those two will help us line to the poles. We generate an offset from the center of the tag to each side of the poles, and that allows us to autonomously align and then place the coral quickly. We Alex, also have, Alex oh. one question for you. I noticed your two front limelights, they're sort of pitched inwards towards each other. Uh, what's the reason for that? Well, when we were scoring pieces, we wanted both cameras to be able to see the center tag, and we just wanted to have as much vision on that tag as we could. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. All right, guys, well, that's the Behind the Bumpers here with 2539, the Krypton Cougars out of Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Thank you again for watching Behind the Bumpers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos.
Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first. 